In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a scroll trigger animation using GSAP. Now, this is one of my first GSAP tutorials and I hope you guys really enjoy it. I feel like scroll animations are pretty much the future. There is a lot of amazing stuff that you're able to do with it. Um, and I know that a lot of you guys have been requesting this and it's finally coming out and I will have a lot more videos going over GSAP because as mentioned, I do feel like it's gonna be the future. So this is what we're gonna be creating. So as you can see, whenever I scroll to a certain position, my background image here or my section will start to expand and get to its normal size and I can go reverse and it'll go ahead and shrink again and then if I go back if I start scrolling it'll scroll down to its original size and there we go now this is what we're going to be creating it is pretty simple but I feel like this is going to be a good start because I'm going to dive more deep into GSAP and JavaScript now I have a surprise for you guys if we can get this video to 50 likes, I will be showing you guys how to create this using GSAP. And as you can tell, whenever I scroll, we start to have elements pop up. And then if I go back, they will start to disappear and it all goes with my um, scroll bar. So this is a really cool animation and hopefully I will be dropping this soon. So if we can get this video to 50 likes, I will be dropping it a lot sooner. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and of course, let's go ahead and begin. So I'm inside my Elementor editor. Now preferably, make sure that you already have a section created and that you have it set up so then it at least takes up most of the screen. Just so then we have the ability to scroll down and we can see that animation effect. So go ahead and create a section. Go into your settings here. Make sure that it's set to full width, add no gap, and then don't worry about our height. We're going to leave that as is, and then we're going to add an intersection. Now this part is really important. There is a reason why we need to add an intersection. Go ahead and do that. We're going to set it up just to one column. Go into your intersection, have that set up to full width. Um, no gap isn't really important. We can leave that as is. And then we can set up a minimum height. And then maybe we can do, we can do about VH. And we can do about, I'm thinking about 80. Usually if you want to take up the entire screen, it's going to be, it's going to be um, 100. But I'm just going to set it up at 80 for right now. Okay. So it's very important that we add a background to our intersection, not our main section, but our intersection. Go into style, go into your um, background type, and then go ahead and add an image. I'm just gonna add a random image that I already have here. I'm gonna choose this one. I'm gonna set this to cover. And then I'm gonna go into background overlay, and I'm just gonna add a background overlay I'm going to make it black. I'm going to bring down the opacity just so then we're able to see our text because I do want to add some text. And I'm going to copy this one that we currently have here. If you guys are wondering from the font, I'm using I'm using Spartan. Sorry about that. I ended up just copying that instead. So I'm using um, Spartan for the font. Let me go into it. So I'm using Spartan and then I'm using viewport width for the sizing. So I have that set to uh, 5.1. I'm going to leave it as is. Then I'm going to go into my um, column. I'm going to go to style. Uh, sorry, actually, you know what? Go back to layout. And then we're going to set this to the middle. And there we go. And then I'm going to go into my column here. And then go into advance. And I'm probably going to add about 200 pixels from the left side. Just so then it's a little bit aligned. That's fine. So it's looking pretty good for now. Um, maybe I'm going to go back into my section here and maybe I might add a little more opacity to this. There we go. It's not really that important, but it is a little bit um, necessary just so then we can see the text. Okay. So now let's go ahead and view this. Now, as you can tell, when we scroll down, we have this um, background here. 
So now that we have this set up, we just need to add a class to our intersection. So click on your intersection, go into advanced, and go ahead and call your class BG dash section, sensor background section, and then go ahead and click update. Of course, it's not going to do anything yet because we still got to add our code. So now let's go into our dashboard. I'm going to open up a different tab here. Go into Elementor and then go into custom code. And this is where we're going to add our custom code. Go ahead and click on add new. And then from here, I'm going to call it GSAP background shrink. There we go. Very important. We set up the location to the body end. There we go. And then our um, condition, go ahead and edit that. We want to set this up just to be singular, just because we only want to run the script on a specific page. So we're going to set this up to pages. And I'm going to look for my GSAP page. Here it is, GSAP background image. That's just what I named it. But whatever you named your page, you can go ahead and choose that. All right. So now we're going to add our script. And you know what? Before we add our script, very important that we do add our um, GSAP library and our GSAP scroll trigger. So I'll have a link to this down in the description so you guys can uh, copy this code. This is just going to allow us to access the GSAP library and the GSAP scroll trigger. So we're going to set this towards the bottom and then we're going to add a script. And then in between that script, we want to go ahead and add a loader. So it's very important that you add this script right here. I will go over the GSAP area, but this part is just a script that's going to allow our GSAP to load. I'm going to go ahead and paste my script. This script right here is going to allow our GSAP to run on um, our website. Without it, GSAP will not run, so make sure that you do paste the script. I will be going over the GSAP just so that you guys know. Alrighty, because we haven't added our GSAP code yet, we did add our GSAP um, scroll trigger which is going to help us out. So in between these brackets here, we're going to go ahead and start typing our, um, our GSAP code. So first thing that we need to do is call out a function because we need to run that function. And we're going to call our function BG underscore section. We're going to have some brackets there and then some curly brackets. And then right here is where we're going to add our, um, our GSAP. But before we do that, so in order for a function to run, we need to actually paste this function right inside here. Okay. Very important. All right. So now within this function, we're going to add our, um, GSAP script. So type in GSAP and then we're going to do from. So basically we're telling it that from a certain size, whether it's a width or whatever it may be, we want it to go from the size that we, that we input to the original size. So let's say I put a width of 80%. Well, I want it to go from 80% to the original size, which is 100%. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So from there, we're going to go ahead and add some brackets and then add some quotations. And then within those quotations, we're going to add our class that we want to target. So it's going to be um, BG dash section. That is the one that we want to go ahead and um, adjust the width. So from there, we're going to add a comma and then we're going to add curly brackets. And then let's go ahead and add this at the end. Just that is very important. And then within our curly brackets, we're going to go ahead and add our scroll trigger. This is very important. And then go ahead and add a colon and then some brackets. 
And then within those brackets, we're going to go ahead and add a trigger. Colon. And we want to target our specific trigger. And go ahead and add some uh, quotations right there. And then we're going to target the same one, which is going to be BG section. And then go ahead and add a comma. And then from here, we want to, we, we want to start it at a specific point. And this is what is going to allow us to do that. So within that, we can either do top, which is the first one. I would honestly have to show you guys an example so you guys know what I'm talking about. So, so I'm just going to type this part out and then I'm going to go over it. So I'm going to do negative 350 pixels center. And then we're going to add an end. So this is basically where our, um, our scroll trigger is going to end. Some quotes here. And then we're going to do 300 pixels and center. There we go. And we're going to add a comma to end it. And then we're going to go ahead and add markers. So we do want to add some markers and that's going to allow us to see whenever our um, scroll trigger is going to start. And you'll see what I mean here. So I'm going to set that up to true. I'm going to do a comma. And then I'm going to add a scrub. So the scrub is basically going to allow us to lock our animation to our scroll bar. So we want to set that up to true. Now I'm not going to add a, um, a comma right here, just because we're going to end that comma right here. Okay. So I'm just going to check my code, make sure I have everything correct. So I did mess up on a comma right here. There we go. Perfect. So it's saying that there's an extra comma, but that's for now because we start, we're we still going to add a bit more code here. So under here is pretty much where we're going to set up our width that we want our animation to start from. So it's going to be 80% is where we want it to start from. And that's and basically we're saying that our um, background size right here, our section sizing, we want it to start at 80%. And then we're going to do a duration. A duration of one and we don't really need a comma there that's fine but we did need a comma here just to end that one off okay I think that is perfect and you know what we actually need to add this within quotations so that is very important let's go and add some quotations here and Let's add 80%. There we go. So I'm just double checking my code here, making sure everything is looking good. So we did do that, did do that. Let me see if I, what errors I have here. So that's normal. That's normal as well. And that's normal, okay. So now we're gonna click update. And I'll be going over this a bit more just so then you guys understand at least us, uh, the start and end because those are very important. I do want to go over those for those of you guys. Okay. So it looks like we have a little issue here, but I know that it is being targeted. And the reason being is that we did see that animation, right? See that? Yeah, so I know that something's just not working here. So just a little typo here. I put scub instead of scrub. So what scrub is going to allow us to do is get our scroll bar to work with our animation. So now if we go ahead and just update this. Now I will have this code down in the description. Anyway, you guys can click the link and grab this code if you guys don't want to write it out. But I do want to go over it just so then you guys can get um, an understanding of GSAP because I feel like that is a future um, scrolling animations are becoming very popular and there's a lot of cool things that you guys can do with that. So now let's go into our website and let's refresh. 
So let's go ahead and scroll. But as you can tell, there is a little bit of a bug. We want it to kind of shrink or we want it to start out at least shrunken like how it is. And we want it to grow from each side, not just one side. So there is an easy way to fix that. Um, and that is why we ended up going with the intersection approach. So I'm going to go over um, these start points here in a little bit, but I want to go over this part first. So the reason why it's doing that is if we go back to our um, Elementor editor, we will see that we have our intersection. So what we need to do is go into our section column, go into layout, and then our horizontal alignment, we want to go ahead and set that to the center. To the center. We click update. Now, if we scroll down, you will notice that it will grow from each side. And that's really cool animation there. So, but if we ended up just using a section, we wouldn't really have an option to center our um, section. And we would be left with that, with that issue where it only grows from one side. So that's why you want to go ahead and use an intersection instead. So now, let me go over um, the start and end point here. So let me go back to my code here just to go over it. So the first one is going to actually be locked into our section. So basically we're saying 350 pixels um, negative. So basically if we would have just from our section here, if we would have done 300 pixels, it would have gone down, right? It would have been right here where the end is. But since we did a negative, that's going to be obviously reverse and it's going to shift it to the top. So that's how that works. So then we have the next one, which is center. And this one actually works with our viewport. So as you can tell from our viewport, we have this start in the center. So that's where that is. And then our end, um, this one, the first one, like I mentioned, is locked into our section. So basically we're saying 300 from our section. That's where we have our end trigger, where our animation will end. So as you can tell, whenever I get to the end, it reaches its destination. And then the next one is pretty much locked into our viewport, as mentioned, it's basically the same way how star would work. So we have it set up to the center. And as you can tell, it says scroller end. So whenever it reaches the view, whenever the, the viewport since it's in the center, whenever we scroll down to end, that's where the animation will end. And as you can tell, we have it start the scroller start. So whenever the scroller start reaches start, that is when our animation is going to begin. And then it's going to reach our scroller end is going to reach the end and that's it. So that's how I went ahead and set that up. So let's get this video to 50 likes and I will be dropping this tutorial. Now, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you guys did find it helpful, of course, make sure to like the video for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos. Now, as always, thanks for watching.